As a miserable PhD candidate who always put extracurricular activities well ahead of his thesis progress, I can well empathise with our next speaker's predicament. In my unsteady estimation, Jeremy Mayle is worthy of comparison with that greatest of 20th century artistic all-rounders, Orson Welles. Resplendent of beard, a proud holder of 13 world records for competitive food eating, <laughs> and enjoying such a healthy sense of humour about body shape that he once christened himself One Fat Man, I trust the soon-to-be Dr. Mayle will embrace the compliment. As a cosmopolitan genius and borderline musical prodigy, his achievements to date are certainly Wellesian, as is his determination tonight to talk about anything but the topic he's meant to be studying. <laughs> Jeremy Mayle. Uh, so I was unsure exactly what to talk about this evening, uh, but as I'm coming to the end of my PhD journey, the journey seemed the most relevant topic. So at the suggestion of my then fiance, I quit my teaching job and enrolled in postgraduate studies. Um, I started my studies in March 2010, at the same time my wife and I were planning our wedding, and so it was kind of a juggle from the very beginning. Uh, when I decided to pursue postgraduate study, I thought it would be a good idea to grow my beard. Partially because I thought it would look awesome to graduate sporting a wizardly beard to go with those ridiculous robes. So the last time I shaved was a week and a half before the wedding. And I began to research beard care and discovered the World Beard and Mustache Championships. The concept of competitive bearding and facial hair appreciation was pretty exciting and entertaining. So I began to speak with people about that concept and found a willing collaborator in Jason Hansen. Together we started the New Zealand Beard and Mustache Appreciation Association, which is an online group, some t-shirts, badges, a blog for the Waikato Times, and the New Zealand's first facial hair competition at Beach Hop. And as part of this pursuit, pursuit, we developed the idea of Beard Lord. Beard Lord is essentially a bearded superhero with limitless power who set about righting the wrongs of the world. So together with the crew at Indie Film, we green, green screened a bunch of ridiculous clips that you can watch online of Beard Lord's adventures. After doing the Beard Lord videos, I thought it would be entertaining to pursue other forms of online videos, and the concept of the Record Squad was developed where a group of guys would get together and attempt to break food-related world records. <laughs> Getting records registered with Guinness is a long and ridiculous process, but at the, about the same time, a group in the US called Record Setter started the Un Universal Records database, and so now I hold 13 <laughs> world records. While all this beard growing and food eating was going on, I co-wrote a short comedy musical called Life in the Kiev, which premiered at the Hamilton Fringe Festival. This followed the story of a man who woke up in the morning to find everyone singing about their life. The songs included Breakfast, an up-tempo romp about a morning routine, I Love to Play with Balls, about manly time at the gym, and Road Rage, which was seen in that photo. Now our story moves back to marriage, only this time with me becoming a marriage celebrant. I was asked by some friends to look into the possibility of becoming a celebrant, something that I thought was an entertaining enough concept to be worth pursuing. So after a lengthy process of form filling, reference getting, interview having and background checking, I was made an official celebrant of New Zealand. Another part of my existence while attempting to become a doctor was working with the always entertaining Funky Monkeys, Kids Entertainers, working with Chris, Neil and Joe has been some of the most hilarious times while getting to see most of this beautiful country. And this is me constructing the world's largest ice cream out of balloons before I hopped into that dog suit. <laughs> While spending many hours on the road with the Funky Monkeys, I spent a lot of those hours in discussion with Mr. Chris Lamsam about all manner of things. How to invent a pocket-sized device that would be able to smell if fruits and vegetables were ripe. The possibilities of opening a, large, a ridiculously large ice cream store and also working together on film scores, the latter of which has become reality with the Scorlocks Collective. Apart from writing music for a range of films, both solo and with the Scorlocks Collective, I've been involved with a bunch of local films, uh, both behind and in front of the camera, working with the crew at Chasing Time Productions. And this photo is always a blast, working on some great films. This is um, from uh, the shoot of Lily White. And it seems that in every picture of me work working on a film, I look like a giant. <laughs> Um, in this film, I, was, uh, I got to play a bounty hunter from the Star Wars universe in Sash Nixon's Hunter. 
It was an entertaining shoot dealing with unfortunate weather and the flooding of most of our filming areas, but I did get to play with that awesome laser axe. Um, I got offered the role because my wife, who was in the grey there, was doing the special effects makeup. As another part of the film, there was an opening scene in a bar on a different planet at a different time, and the hero needed a big guy to fight, and I'm a big guy, so I volunteered to play the character. Unfortunately, I was already in the film with my very distinctive beard and mohawk, so I'd be recognisable as two characters, so my wife did this facial, facial reconstruction using effects makeup to make me into an alien. One of the more recent film projects is a film called Serve and Protect by Chasing Time Productions. Um, it gets its New Zealand premiere next week up in Auckland. It's full of action, banjos, explosions and general hilarity. And once again, I look like a giant. <laughs> Amongst all this silliness and action-packed fun times, the focus turned back to family and my wife became pregnant. Exciting times. It's quite a journey growing a human. Uh, it seems you can never be sure of what to expect. And this part of the PhD process didn't go exactly as we'd hoped, but growing children being a time-consuming business, we did end up with a very healthy boy. My son Wolfgang was born on the 27th of February last year. He is a very entertaining little person. It's been a pleasure to watch him grow. As, and as I'm studying and working from home, I have the privilege of being a stay-at-home dad for most of the time as well, which is a cool and somewhat frustrating job. Um, in this picture, he's getting extra hearing tests because as a musician, I wanted to make sure his hearing was really good. <laughs> and amongst everything else, I have been actually completing some PhD research, exploring the possibilities for a systematic method of genre hybrid, of hybrid genre composition. As a creative practice-based thesis, uh, where the majority of my work is in musical composition, this is a picture from the premiere of a piece called The Birth, which is a multimedia piece for chamber orchestra, soprano, voice narrator, video dancers, aerosooks, and pyrotechnics. It was the first time that they'd had pyros inside the Academy of Performing Arts, and they're much louder and hotter than I expected. <laughs> uh, this piece is a, a piece that I wrote called Tracking Forward for viola and backing and video. Uh, it combines 20th century solo viola techniques with blues music, electronic dance music, and electroacoustic soundscape with a video made by Dan Ingalls. This picture is from a premiere performance of a piece called The Long White Cloud, originally performed at a showcase concert I put on at the Academy of Performing Arts. This involved a large number of Hamilton and musicians from over New Zealand and a lot of Hamilton uh, talent doing the lighting design and sound design and everything. It's a vibrant creative place. This is from the most recent piece I've composed for Piano Trio and Boombox. It's written for the New Zealand Chamber Soloists so that in the picture. Um, the Boombox is an upcycled design made by my father out of an old suitcase and an old car stereo. Uh, musically the piece is influenced by funk and jazz and soul but reworked into a contemporary classical setting and I'll leave you with this picture of my desk, which I will be heading home to at the end of this evening, every night, this is where I sit, going through texts, checking sources, and ever so slowly chipping away at the remaining 30,000 words that I need to write to complete my thesis, which I'll be doing until February when I move to Dunedin to take up a job writing music full-time. Thank you.